Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Rover Product Enhancements V524, Custom Tax Rule for an, a Range of Nights, <coughs> Reports Expanded and More, presented by Stay in Touch Implementation Consultant, James Lee. I'm your host, Erin Fisher, the content writer here at Stay in Touch. Today's presentation will cover how you can get the most out of Rover V524 product release. In this webinar, we will discover how to print company address on bill number one at the time of checkout, explore how to access company and travel agent cards attached to a group account or account from the group or account itself, review how the activity log now records any attempts to print or email an invoice and reprint or re-email a copy of an invoice, identify the addition of vehicle registration number to the in-house guest report, explore the option to export several reports in CSV format, discover the addition of several reports to scheduled reports, review the additional time period ranges added to the business on the books report and the forecast report, explore new analytics dashboards enhancements, illustrate how to deactivate room status change during end of day, and identify the addition of a night's range custom tax rule. We will have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation and we will answer them in the order they are received at the end. And that's all I have right now. James, I'm gonna hand the presentation over to you. Thanks, Erin. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining and taking time out to, for the uh, version 5.24 rollout webinar. Uh, some of the new enhancements that we are going to uh, discuss, I'm gonna actually log in here to my training environment. We're gonna the James Hotel, New York City. <clears throat> so the first feature we'd like to cover is the ability to print a company address on a folio. Now, if I take a look at Brian Hill's reservation here, and I can see that he's with Amazon. If I go into bill and charges here, there's now a new checkbox here that says use company address. Now, if I look at Brian Hill's address here, it does show that he lives in San Diego, California. However, with this box checked, when I print out his invoice, it is going to show the address of the Amazon offices. Now, Brian Hill is still registered on the room. His, his name is just moved over here to the right but the address is showing the office for Amazon. The next feature we would like to discuss is the ability to attach a company or travel agency card to a group. If I go to my main menu here and I bring up my groups that I have in my hotel, I have a group here called Verizon Wireless Executive Retreat. Now with this uh, group, I do have the name Verizon phone here. This is the company card and I have the travel agency Amex Travel here as well. You'll notice as these things are added, these buttons will pop up here on the right, and these allow you to access that information directly from the group. So if I go ahead and click on the blue square here for company, this is gonna take me into the company card. And I can see Verizon phone, and I see their information here. Same goes for the travel agency, which is the purple icon with the globe. If I click on this option here, it is gonna take me to the travel agency card, and I see the information here for the travel agency. The next feature that we'd like to discuss is the ability to uh, for Rover to populate activity for when a, a guest folio is printed or emailed. Uh, if I bring up a reservation here for James Lee in 302, and if I go to bill and charges here, and let's say I want to print an invoice. <clears throat> or if I actually want to email an invoice. And now when I go back to the state card and I take a look at our activity log and now show that it shows an email was printed and it also shows the record that the email was invoiced or the invoice was emailed as well. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to show is that we have added a field to our guest in-house report. Uh, if you'll notice, if I look at Brian Hill's reservation here, and I go into his guest card. 
And I see that he has a vehicle registration number, HKM5415. And now when I go run my report for guest in-house, I see on his uh, reservation here, it does show the vehicle registration number on the guest in-house report. Now you can also run a filter to where we'll only show you guests that have an actual vehicle registration on the reservation. So if I go into my guest in-house report, <clears throat> I now have an option here to do has vehicle registration number. By checking this option, it's only gonna show you the guests that are in-house that currently have a vehicle registration number on their record. So now if I look at this, I only see Brian Hill's name on there. Now we've also added uh, the ability to export to a CSV file several of our reports. Uh, just to kind of go over the reports that you can now export to a CSV file, uh, we have the add-on forecast report. This report shows you right here. Uh, you can run that and that will allow you to export that to a CSV file. We also have our company TA top producer report. Uh, company TA top producer report, this will also up upgrade to a CSV file. We also do our forecast guest and groups report, our market segment statistics report, and our occupancy revenue summary report. All those reports now you have the ability to export to a CSV file. <clears throat> In addition to that, we've also added several reports to our ability to schedule them. So if I go into my report scheduler here, uh, some of the new reports that we have here are going to be the reservation by user report. You can have that scheduled to be emailed to you as well as the room status report. So if you're a housekeeping manager, uh, you wanna be able to have the uh, room status report emailed to you on a daily basis, uh, you can use that report here as well. In addition to that, we've added some new date ranges for some existing reports that you can have scheduled. Uh, if you look at the business on the books report and I look at my time periods here, if I go all the way to the bottom, we've added four new options here. We have our current month, current plus one month, current plus two months, and then current plus three months. Now these formats have also been added to the um, forecast report as well. Uh, so if I look at my forecast report, now I have a time range here, you see those four options down here at the bottom as well. <clears throat> well, the next option, I'm gonna actually log into our live environment to our demo hotel, which is going to be the Wexford Bay here. Okay, and we're actually going to go into our analytics here. Now we've added a couple of ways to add filters and to save filters to certain analytics dashboards. Uh, for example, distribution is one of them. If I click on distribution here, this will show me my analytics for uh, different occupancy. Uh, but if I go to my filter option here, and let's say I want to look at a specific market, I can actually click on my market here and say I want to look at transient and I want to look at retail. Let's say I also want to look at rack. And then I can add a filter set here and name this filter. And save it. <clears throat> and then I can go and apply the filter. And this will show me my analytics by those certain market segments. And now if I get out of here and I come back to it, so let's say if I go back to my dashboard here, and I go back into my analytics and I go to distribution again. When I hit filter, that filter I added is already applied here. It's saved for me. All I got to do is click on it and those filters will populate and I can apply the filters. <clears throat> now this is also um, put in place for the page report as well. Uh, you can do uh, different filters there and save them the same way. All right, next I'm gonna go back over to the James Hotel here. 
Now, we have recently rolled out the ability to disable the room status update during end of day for your in-house guests. Uh, so under hotel and staff and settings and parameters, uh, there is a toggle switch in here now for deactivate housekeeping room change. What this does is your stayovers that are currently in-house, when you run your night audit, instead of turning dirty, they will remain clean. Uh, so that way they never turn dirty uh, in your system. With um, everything going on with COVID-19 right now, we understand there are a lot of hotels out there that have halted uh, in-room uh, housekeeping service for guests that are still in-house. Uh, this is a function that would be good for you. That way it doesn't update anything dirty that is currently a stayover. Now, when the guest checks out, the room will still update to a dirty status. <clears throat> this only impacts your guests that are currently in-house, but by deactivating it, uh, when you run your night audit, those rooms will stay clean. Uh, they will not turn to a dirty status. And just as a reminder, if you wanted to disable your stayover service altogether, you can go into your task management here and just <clears throat> uh, disable your stayover under task list. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is our custom tax rule for nights range. Uh, if I go into financials here and I go into my charge codes and look at my taxes, let's say I want to take a look at my. New York City sales tax. <clears throat> if I come here, I now have the option right here for enable nights range. And what this allows you to do is the ability to set certain tax rates by certain ranges. So you can say, if a guest is staying for two weeks, uh, for one to 14 days, they're gonna pay this tax rate. If they're staying more than 14 days, so 14 to 15 days, it's gonna be this tax rate. 16 to 30 days will be this tax rate, et cetera. But let's say, for example, I wanted to add a night range here and say that any guest that is staying 30 to 365 days is not gonna pay tax for that. Now the first 30 days, they still will pay tax, but at the 31st night, uh, they will stop paying taxes at that point. And here I can go ahead and save the changes. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and do the same for my other sales tax. and save that. Now I do have a reservation here under the name of Matt Rose that we could take a look at. And he is staying more than 30 nights. And if I go into his invoice and run a performer invoice, uh, performer invoice, just as a reminder, is a folio that's going to give you anticipated charges for a guest. Uh, so it's going to show their folio what they should look, look like at checkout, barring no other incidental charges. Uh, you'll notice that there are room charges here. You'll see the taxes post. But if I go all the way towards the bottom of the bill, you'll notice that the taxes are still posting. Well, that's okay. Hold on. This reservation might not have updated. Let me see if I make a new reservation here. All right, let's test this one out here. There we go. So we go towards the bottom of the uh, performer invoice here. I see the room charges with all the taxes, but the very bottom, the taxes stop posting after the 30th day. And now I just see the room charge and the facility fee post. And that will conclu conclude our enhancements for uh, our new version. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Erin. Thank you, James, for that insightful presentation. I'd now like to turn over the floor for questions. Remember, you can submit questions through the question box in the middle of the control panel. So I'll give everyone a few seconds to enter those. 
All right. Uh, so the first question is, how can a company be removed from a group after it has been added? Oh, for that, you can actually, if I just go into groups and go to manage groups, now normally when you would access a company card from a reservation, there's a big detached card that lets you do that. Uh, if you'll notice that detached card is not here, but all you really got to do is just remove it from this area here. So if I, oops, take that out. You'll notice the company card. That's going to give you a warning that you're removing that. You can go and detach it. And then you'll notice the icon does disappear. Same with the travel agency. If I just delete the travel agency, that button will disappear. Great. Um, and then the next question is, I'm looking at a reservation in my hotel and I'm not seeing a field for vehicle registration number. Why is this? So the vehicle registration field does need to be populated, uh, sorry, need to be activated. Uh, you can actually do this in settings. Uh, so if I go to my settings here, and if I go into cards, I have my option here for guest card fields. And here's when I can activate that field. I think by default it's turned off. So if you do want to access the vehicle registration number on a reservation, uh, you would need to come here in settings and just activate it here with this little toggle switch. Great. And it looks like there aren't any more questions. I'll just give everyone a few more seconds to enter any last questions. All right. Since there are no more questions, I would like to take to the floor to offer some final thoughts. So today we discovered how to print a company address on bill number one at the time of checkout, explored how to access company and travel agent cards attached to a group or account from the group or account itself, reviewed how the activity log now records any attempts to print or email an invoice and reprint or re-email a copy of an invoice identified the addition of the vehicle registration number to the in-house guest report, explored the option to export several reports in CSV format, discovered the addition of several reports to scheduled reports, reviewed the additional time period ranges added to the business on the books report and the forecast report, explored new dashboards enhancements, illustrated how to deactivate room status change during end of day, and identified the addition of a night's range custom tax rule. With that, I'd like to conclude our presentation. Thank you all for coming, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me at erin.fisher at stayintouch.com. Thanks again.